Imagine being a drug dealer at 12 years old. Would you ever think to yourself 10 years later in that position that you will get drafted to the NBA? What's good YouTube? It's your boy James. I hope it's all good for you because it's all good for me. Now, usually on YouTube, you have a story like Karan Butler's from a drug dealer to an NBA All-Star. And they would just tell the story for about 10 minutes. But you know, I want to do something a little different. In a website called KaranButler.com, which I'll put in the link in the description, he pretty much tells his story with his own voice, evidently. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take what he said, and I'm going to use some animation to give you guys a nice visual presentation of what was going on. And hope you guys enjoyed the video, man. Also, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, comment, share it to your friends, and also follow me on Horror Amino. That's where I do all my polls, so that way you get to see what video is coming up. But anyways, on to Crumb Butler's story. I used to always respect these people that came and reached out and took time out their life, their busy life, to talk to me and try to influence and encourage me to do positive things. But at the same time, you did not experience what I experience. You do not see what I see every time I jump off the porch and I live my life on a day to day. Have you ever lost your best friend? Have you ever been shot at? Have you ever shot at someone? Do you know how we feel about you? And do you know how they feel about me? I grew up in Racine, Wisconsin. You know, everybody was a little hard on for cash, but uh, everyone made ends meet. I had role models. It wasn't positive role models. People that wore flashy jewelry and, and gold chains and drove around in fancy cars and had the women and, you know, sold drugs. My mom, you know, even when she wasn't working in the shift she's supposed to be sleeping, she still was up, raising me, my baby brother as well, working hard, relentlessly, two jobs, and to this day, I still don't, don't know how she did it. I had a paper route, you know, I tried to make ends meet, try to buy the, the newest shoes and the newest outfits and stuff like that so I can be fresh, but I just felt like the paper route wasn't enough. I started selling drugs. I was easy 11 or 12 years old. I picked up my first pack. I was out in the streets and making moves, making sales, trying to build my clientele, make my mark, and, you know, get as much money as fast as I can. People was dying, you know, so often, and it was, you know, shootouts even more often. So, you know, you had, you had to protect yourself. I grew up in, you know, dare and hang tough and take a bite out of crime and all that too. But at the same time, this is what my future holds anyway. Like, I don't see anything outside of this. And the people that I do see that's working are working extremely hard, like my mother's working. So I took the risk. I was always taller than the other kids. I still stand at about six six, six foot seven. I've been this height since probably about ninth grade, eighth grade. You know, basketball was just, you know, a pastime. I didn't look years down the road. I was just trying to survive that minute, that next hour, that next second. Like, I didn't look to the future like that. I remember that morning arriving to Case High School, and I saw the ATF come in the classroom, and I looked around, and, you know, we had the windows that kind of didn't slide all the way open so I couldn't jump out or anything. We was on the second floor. You know, they apprehended me, they handcuffed me, and they told me that they had found uh, a gun in the locker and some cocaine as well. You know, a lot of times before it was, it was more hearsay. But this time, I was caught red-handed with everything and I was just stuck. I ended up in uh, Ethan Allen Correctional Facility. I went to the hole. It humbled me. 
you know how you can just be humbled and just continue to be humbled before you just finally get the message because people always say like what is the one thing that happened that just changed you I, I don't think it was one thing but it all hit me at one moment and I think that was when I was in solitary confinement for 23 hours a day I had to sit there and just think about how much of a disappointment I was to my mother my family and what I needed to do to get back on the right track you know, when people see me coming, they see trouble. Like, how can I change that? So when I got out, I try to do everything positive that I could possibly do. Enroll in school, get in school, try to get a job. Anything good that I could possibly do, that's what I was doing.